amplifiers. Uh. If you play electric guitar, you're probably gonna want one. Guitar amplification technology has advanced a lot over the years. I mean, look at this thing. It's tiny. But you're not here to listen to me yammer on about this thing. Nope. We're going back to the neon lit hair metal days of the 1980s. And what kind of amp would a guitarist from the 1980s have? Well, unless you were a wealthy yuppie or something, you'd probably have something like... Oh, God. This. Here it is. Gorilla. It was in decent condition when I acquired it in the early aughts. But life has brutally trudged forward, leaving this poor relic relegated to various storage sheds and basements. It is in a sad state now, but I should be able to restore it to its former... Not so much glory, but let's say functionality. Former functionality. It's filthy. Look at this. Ugh. How good. Okay, so first things first. Does it work? No fire yet. That sounds pretty. <laughs> I could just, uh, wipe this thing down and call it a day, but, uh, it kind of stinks. It smells very musty. Oops, I just dropped the whole thing. No! Come on. Come on. Cooperate. Alright. The brains. Turn it, Bobby. Something wrong with this screw. I don't know what's wrong with it. Ain't no gas in it. Judging by the way they put this thing together, they really didn't want anyone getting in here and taking this thing apart. This guy right here was a pain in the booty. The reverb tank made it so I couldn't uh, get any tools on the nut to uh, remove it. And I couldn't get the reverb tank out of the way because the speaker was in the way of getting the reverb tank out. That was fun. <laughs> My hands are filthy. Smells like pickles. Oops. Bubbles. If you've ever wondered what uh, 37 years of dust might look like, it might look something like this. Now that I've disassembled this thing, 
Let's go over what it is uh, we have here. This is a Gorilla GG110. It says so right there. It is 150 watts. This particular one was manufactured between October and December of 1985. I know this because it says so right there. This is the uh, head of the amp, the brains of the operation. I'm not even going to pretend like I know what all these circuits, chips, doodads, and whatchamacallits do. I'll move on to things a little less uh, technical. It has uh, two inputs here, one labeled boost, one not labeled boost. Anyway, the signal from the guitar comes in here, goes do 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 I'm a guitar signal! And goes do 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 and splits off from this, then goes down these wires to this guy. This here is the reverb tank. It has these uh, springs in here. The signal from the guitar comes down, goes through these wires, and then resonates these springs, causing them to vibrate. And then uh, it's then picked up here on the other side, sent out, back up to back up to here, and then uh, meets back up with the dry guitar signal and is sent out alongside the dry signal. The uh, reverb knob here, it adjusts the volume or the, you know, amount of reverb you have, re reverb, reverb you have. You turn it up, more reverb, turn it down, less reverb. Not too complicated in theory. The signal is then sent out to the speaker, which uh, some numbskull dented in the cone while cleaning it. Or maybe it was done on purpose so I can show you how to fix that. Yep, no mistakes here, just opportunities for learning. Anyway, it has a 12 inch speaker. The signal coming from the amp comes to the speaker, vibrates the speaker, which vibrates the air, invisible air vibrations, and it vibrates your tympanic membrane in your ear. This sends electrical signals to your brain, interpreting it as sound. Hopefully pleasant ones. Anyway, the uh, boost switches on this particular amp have uh, been broken since before I acquired it. So I'm gonna fix those, and then I'm gonna clean the pots, and then put it all back together and see if it sounds as grimy as I remember. Boop, boop. All right, we're gonna try the super glue and uh, Q-tip trick. I've not personally done this before, but we'll see how it works. My super glue's stuck. Guess I'll try that again. Okay, this technique is flawed. There's not enough surface area for the uh, Q-tip to grab anything. Moving right along. Well, that's good enough. sound good. That sounds terrible. I think I broke the reverb. Hmm. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit of reverb. Hmm. Hmm. It's gotta be the pot. See, now I can't turn the reverb off.
Okay, more work to do. I may not be a smart man, but I know something's missing. Probably why it's not working right. Remember who you are. Can't believe I forgot the most important part. I decided not to go through the effort of fixing the reverb because uh, I don't plan on using this amp for anything other than this uh, demonstration. Yep, that's a grimy amp. The volume knobs are really touchy. You can't turn them both up. They, like, this thing is loud. This thing is really loud. It sounds dirty, like there's literal dirt inside of it, which there probably is. I didn't do that good of a job of cleaning it, but you know, it sounds bad. I'm sure someone out there could get a good sound out of one of these. I am not that someone. Gorilla amps have an odd reputation. People love them, hate them, and love to hate them. The Gorilla Amps are somewhere in between mediocre and absolutely horrible. They were cheap, so they became many a guitarist's first amplifier in the mid-80s, early 90s. Since they were so prevalent as the budding guitarist's first amplifier, there's a, a sense of nostalgia around them. Like those that have had one, see them and think, those were the good old days. Then they hear the way they sound again, and uh, there's a smile on their face that says, It sounds like crap, but darn it if I don't love it. Anyway, that's about all I got. Thanks for watching. Good luck on all the things, and I'll see you later.